Welcome friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am glad that you are able to make it to this place. Now, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Listen to me, I want you to listen uninterruptedly to the message I'm about to bring to you. God has given me a word for you and your life will never be the same again. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and don't forget to make comments. I would like to read your comments and don't forget to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button to receive notification for new uploads of videos. Now listen to me, you are in for the best of time. God's word is going to come and change your life. I'm going to come back and pray with you before the end of this video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you again. God bless you. Everybody has got you to marry. Nobody is proposing to me. God doesn't love me. You see, the moment you have those negative things going on in your mind, you feel rejected, you feel unloved. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no how Satan will not strike because that's what he's looking for. So the first instruction he gave them is that don't be afraid. Never say I'm not afraid. I will not be afraid. You are not saying it well. What I'm talking about is so important to God that in the Bible he mentioned it 365 times. It's so important to God that he was repeating himself, fear not for I'm with you. Fear not for I'm with you. Fear not for I'm with you. But even though he said it 365 times, some people still didn't hear him. Some people still didn't believe him. Some people still didn't understand. They are still afraid. Fear not. 365 times. 365 days of the year. Every day he said, don't be afraid. One of the things sin brought to man is fear. When God wanted to come and fellowship with Adam, where are you? He said, when I heard your voice, I was afraid. Abi? That was the first time human being was afraid. You are afraid? Me and you that we used to fellowship together before? That we are paddy paddy? Now you heard my voice, you are running for me? Because the nature of sin is that the moment sin comes into your life, it brings fear. Sin is not the problem. It is what sin brings that is the problem. It brings fear. Is that the wicked wrong? When no man, what? Since I got born again, I have never dreamt one night and people are running after me. You know who we say, ah, try last the night. They were running after me. They beat me. They nearly beat hell out of me. What he, what he be? There is no, any demon sent to come and beat me in my dream, he will tell Satan himself that, oh God, you have to go for yourself. <laughs> but you have some case, ah, I had nightmare. Night what? Nightmare. Same fat. Fat person. One fake Pamela Leana. Sometimes sin brings torment. Sometimes sin brings what? Torment. It brings rejection, condemnation, fear. Any small thing like this, fear. Because, you see, that's what sin does. It creates fear. And that atmosphere of fear, Satan thrives inside it. The moment you are married, you, keep, you walk into your home, you are afraid that maybe the marriage will break. Job said, what I fear most has eventually happened to me. How Satan starts with us is that he will just, first of all, plant fear. And fear has killed more people than anything in the world. A new marriage, you are afraid of divorce. New marriage. When people are doing 72 years of wedding anniversary. Yeah, I saw a couple, 70 something years. And they are still holding each other's hands. 70 something years. And they ask one of them, they say, ah, are you not tired? He said, I'm not tired. He said, I wake up every day looking forward to the name another day. They are already over 100 years old. Your whole marriage is just three months. Just back here, three months there. You're afraid. Hallelujah. 
Do you know that coronavirus kill few people? The fear of coronavirus kill more people. Just the fear. See, there's something in town now. See, it's a pestilence. It's killing people. Let's cover our nose, so, which is good. Let's wash our hands, so, which is good. But there are people, they cover their nose. They wash their hands. They even took a vaccine. They are still afraid. They, are still, they took vaccine. They are still afraid. Hallelujah. I prophesy. Somebody here will not have anything to do with fear anymore. Whatever they call fear is terminated in your life. Fear. Let me quickly resume to what I'm trying to say. Victory that God has given to you will start from the inside. Even though we've been given victory, it will start from within. You must see yourself as victorious. You must win in the inside. You know why you must win in the inside? The battleground has been taken from the ground to the mind. Personally, I believe the Nigerian government has spent enough money to buy weapons, to fight kidnapping and uh, bandit, and uh, you know, the names are changing every other time. And uh, Boko Haram, you see, you see Boko Haram, they're just insurgents, un unknown government. It's the same, they're in the same, the same camp. <laughs> Do you know that we've spent enough money? Personally, I believe that if the government will invest into capital and human development, these things will stop. Because, you see, it takes not knowing who you are, not appreciating your own life to destroy other people's life. To carry gun and be killing other people, you have to first of all kill yourself. You must have killed yourself. You must have lost your self-esteem. That you don't even believe in your own self. You don't even like yourself. To now carry gun and start destroying people. So no matter how many guns they buy for our military, to face these guys. We need to fix some fundamental things. That's why those boys should go back to school. You see, what I, why I respect Islam is that it, thinks, it seems like Islam is more strategic than Christians. Do you know that Islam, they can target an environment. They targeted Turkey for years. They were not carrying Bible every Saturday, running up and down like we used to do. And they, with their own strategy, they took over Turkey. They can have 50 years plan in their own case. We, we don't have, which plan do we have when we are fighting ourselves? The, fight, the, the only fight we are fighting is that your church is better than my church, my church is better than your church. That's the only way. They, they don't have time to say one mosque is better than one mosque. The battle has moved from the battleground to the mind. And if you can't win the battle in the mind, you cannot win any battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What is going on in your mind daily is very important. The thoughts going on in your mind daily is very important. The kind of imaginations, very important. The kind of thoughts, very important. Because that's the battlefield. You cannot continue to think poverty. You are thinking poverty, thinking failure, and expect to succeed. You cannot continue to think defeat and think defeat and expect to, to win. The battle is inside. You have to win from the inside. You have to see yourself as a victor. And confess yourself. Look, what you believe is what you become. You have to believe. You say, but pastor, I'm not winning yet. Yet, yes, why you are still not winning in the practical, in reality, you have to believe the word of God. Believe God's promise that you have overcome. Hallelujah. This is very important too. That is what should wake you up in the morning. The excitement that you are an overcomer. That's what should make you content in every, con content, sorry, in every circumstance. Because you know it is well with your soul. I would say it is well with my soul. Say I will be content in every circumstance. So he told the people of Israel, stand still, sorry, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. He has not even done it, but he said you have to see it. The money has not showed up, but he said you have to see it. Hallelujah. What do you see? Let me tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor for me. I'm going to say, neighbor, what do you see? Whether you like it or not, in this world, there are two things that you've already presented before all of us. Thou prepares the table before me, 
in the presence of my enemy. But what do you see? I see table. I see flourishing table. I said I see flourishing table. What do you see? Do you see, all you see is the things you read on news, that dollar is rising, uh, naira is falling apart, blah, 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 blah. It's not easy to live in Nigeria again. Do you know that people are enjoying Nigeria now? If Nigeria is that bad, naira is, one naira is now, sorry, one pound is now 2,000 plus naira. Go to, tomorrow morning, go to Muritala Mohammed International Airport. Find a place to sit down. You see foreigners rolling in their bags with confidence into the same place we were running out of. There must be something that they are seeing that many of us are not seeing. People shouldn't be looking for our visa again by now. But our visa is hot cake. Nigeria embassy is rejecting many foreigners every time. I was even surprised. By now we should be visa free. <laughs> we should be visa free. Because you should think that nobody is applying. But if you know how many that are wants to come into Nigeria from China and they have rejected them. I had a story of a Chinese who has applied up to three times and they rejected him. And his problem now is Nigerian visa. This Nigeria. I'm sure that Chinese man in his prayer, God, grant me favor in the Nigerian embassy. <laughs> let me let me just grant me visa this time. Why Nigerians are saying, Father, if you love me, if truly you love me, take me out of this country. <laughs> because what we are seeing is not what we should be seeing. I see prosperity. The land is gray. This land is gray. Don't listen to what they are saying. This land is, the, is green. This land is green. This land is green. Your situation is hopeful, not hopeless. Your condition can change. There is nothing too difficult for God to do. Please don't, let, don't submit to Satan. Don't throw in the towel and feel it can't work. It will work. That marriage will work. If two of you will agree that it will work, it will work. If two of you will submit to the God's authority, the authority of God's word, it will work. If two of you will say, look, we are not going anywhere. They ask one of those who, there's a couple, they said they've been married for over 60 years. They say, how did you get here? They said, divorce was not an option. That from the beginning, we told ourselves, no matter what happened, we'll resolve it. Said, so we have not even thought of divorce. I prophesy. Everywhere there is, op you think there's option for you to fail, we cancel that option. Amen. Everywhere you think you have option to fall, we cancel that option. Option for defeat. We cancel that option. The only option you have is to succeed. The only option you have is to win. Oh, you are not saying amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as I round off, winning starts from the inside. If you can't see it, you can never have it. I'm a winner all the time. Look, no matter what it looks like, never see yourself as a defeated foe. When I was still in school, in my, fin in my final year, no, is it? No, in my third uh, second to the last final year, I had one more year. I went to check my result and I failed two courses, prerequisite courses. These two courses, everybody failed that course because they know if you fail it, it's an extra year. So I went and I'm a, and, and I was, I mean, a pastor on campus, the pastor of Rema Chapel Campus Fellowship. I'm sorry, Rema Chapel, Joss. My first time on campus, as soon as, soon as I landed in the gate, People already know I, I, I come back from, from house. Ah, pastor, how are you doing? They started following me. So I, I had entourage. I would have told them, please, don't follow me. I want to go and check my result. I did not tell them. With confidence. They will follow me. Ah, pastor, so bad with me. So we got to the board. He said, but pastor, they don't know your matriculation card and number. I used to preach and mention my matriculation number. I'll preach, I'll say, I can never fail. This is my matric number. But that particular time. So even if I don't tell them this is my result, some of them already have my matric number. So as I was looking at it, they were looking at it. I didn't know they have seen it. Me, I've seen that. Uh, then everybody went quiet. Like, oh, oh my shoe. 
The pastor of Rema Chapel has failed. So when I look at their faces, I say, why are you people looking like this? They say, sorry, pastor. I said, don't, so- don't sorry me. I say, I didn't fail. I say, I can never fail. Ah, <laughs> they look at me like, this guy, Abu <laughs> This one, we all see it, you fail. Now. I, say, I say, I can never fail. Then I look at them, I say, let's go and celebrate. I, I passed. <laughs> they followed me to eat my food. I bought everybody food. I said, let's celebrate. I said, because I pass. Let me tell you why I did that. I didn't do that to deny the fact. I did that to let Satan know that you can't steal my smile. You can't steal my dance. You can't steal my song. These three things. If, I, if everything you take, you won't take that one. And to be frank, that thing did not cost me extra year. It was, I, I've told you the story before. It did not cost me extra year. And that's the first time in the, they say prerequisite. You can't register two prerequisites. Me, I registered two prerequisites. They said they will reject you. I said, don't worry. I wanted to go and submit my form. He said, don't submit yet. The Spirit of God said, don't go yet. No, 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 no. This is not the time. Let everybody submit. Final day. I took the thing. I registered the two. I gave it to the man. He looked at the thing. Normally, he was supposed to say, no, 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 you cannot register this. You are taking this next year. He didn't say anything. He stamped the thing. Boom. So my friends say, ah, this prerequisite courses, it may be the same time you are writing this one, they'll be writing that one. I said, don't worry. Maybe it's me. I said, I'll use one hour to finish this one. I'll run into the second one. They said, no, they won't allow you to enter. I said, leave it. That year, they didn't do it at the same time. So I wrote the other one, Kule. I went and read the other one, Kule, and I passed. How I escaped it today, maybe they didn't see it till now, I don't know, but I escaped. The things you are worried about, God has already made the way. The reason why you want to kill yourself, God has already made the way. Calm down! The things that are making you worry, God has already made the way. He said, I will make a way where it seems there is no way. Will I ever be happy? He has made the way for your joy. Will I pay this debt? He has made a way to pay that debt. You have that testimony now. The brother was in debt. He came to my office. When he mentioned the debt, I even wanted to be part to help him. I said, send me your account number. I wanted to give him a, part, a, a little part of it just to encourage him. He said, I was hungry. How can pastor be giving me money? I said, he said, so I didn't send my account number. He said, I challenged myself and challenged God. I said, no. Then two businesses came in. And he paid off the debt and still had money. Then on Wednesday, when he was in just worship again, another business came in, came in again. Look, that thing you want to kill yourself about has already been dealt with. Stand up on your feet wherever you are. Place your right hand on your chest. Say, I'm winning from within. I'm winning from my thought level. I'm not a, I'm not a failure. I'm not a defeat. I cannot be defeated. I have already overcome. I am born to win. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Turn it to prayer quickly. Wow, what a great word from heaven. What a word. Now, one thing I know that I'm assured and I know is that God will always confirm his words. I declare and I decree. Every word that has been spoken in your direction will find fulfillment in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus for those who might be sick in the body, receive healing in your body, receive healings in your bone, receive healing in your, in your blood. Everywhere sickness might be hiding in your body. The Bible says as soon as a stranger hear my voice, they will run out of their hidden place. Every disease and sickness in your body, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I declare God's blessings over your life. If you desire a divine intervention in one area of your life, maybe your marriage, your relationship, your finance, I declare that God will step into your case and turn things around for your good. God bless you. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends and family, make comments. I want to read your comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back again with another very powerful message. God bless you.